Hello everyone, uh, CISC 106, 106ers, how are you doing? I thought I would set up a quick uh, getting started video, getting started in the class video, not really getting started with any particular project, but just how to get ourselves up and running in this course this semester. Um, it, it is an asynchronous course, which means we have no set uh, meeting times and no not in person or uh, set meeting times uh, online either, like class times, like Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that type of thing. Uh, but I do have office hours posted, which are pretty consistent. Uh, we'll talk about those in a moment. So really, I thought I'd just kind of acclimate you to how we will uh, go through the course this semester, how you get a hold of me, how you move forward, how you get a grade that you're looking for in this course. So uh, just a very general kind of overview of the of the uh, sys 106 of this course so i'll start by jumping over to canvas we have a course site here on campus uh let me jump over there uh oh what's happened here oh there we go all right so um when you log into canvas yours will look a little bit different uh i have a, of course a different view than than what you have you, you'll be looking at student i, I have a way to look at this a student view so you, this will be more what you see. Of course, my computer is really running slow here today. Boy, I should, probably shouldn't have done this. Good to see, look at it. It's barely creeping along. So that's your view, um, which we're going to leave in a moment here, and hopefully it won't take us long. Uh, so you have a to-do list over here on the right. I've got things listed as uh, to-do stuff. Uh, so you might want to keep an eye there. I personally watch it through uh, the site, and I navigate the site when I'm looking through things, um, through modules. And I thought of, conceptually, I think of the site in this modules kind of uh, atmosphere. And so I'll, I'll kind of go through that as well. But I did want to go over this first page here. Uh, on the site uh, before we go into any deeper into the course. Um, I have this area at the top here called Sys 106 Hangouts. Um, think of this as like an open lab that we might have. I think of it as an open lab on main campus where it's not really specific to any particular computer science course, but rather just it's a computer science lab. So you, you could find people from Sys 101, Sys 103, Sys 108, and Sys 106 all in this hangout. So hopefully what might happen, the way I like to see this kind of work, is that you guys can kind of all work together uh, in this lab area, virtual lab area, which brings to, uh, me to, a, I guess, a, a point that I should make here, because that, that may sound a little funny to you that you're working together um, a little potentially dangerous, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I personally define cheating in this course and any of my computer science courses. Let me switch back to myself so you can see me. Here I am. I define cheating as uh, copying someone else's code and submitting it as your own. Right? I do not define as cheating working with someone else on some particular problem. So it could be that you both wind up with the same answer or a very similar answer, but that doesn't mean you're cheating. So, so you know, a good litmus test is, when you're thinking about this, is if you're learning along the way, then I see that as collaboration. <laughs> if you're just copying work to submit to get something behind you, then that's cheating. So there's no problem with you being in this Discord group. It's a Discord group. Um, and the discussing issues with uh, uh, your peers, fellow students who, are, who happen to be in there, maybe understand or remember how to do it uh, and can help you to understand too. You just want to make sure that you're always really learning, actually understanding something, because that is the point here, right? We do want to learn something about computer science while we're in here. It is important, especially if you're going to be an engineering major and that's likely if you're in sys 106 then you're going to be, want to be able to program computers so cheating is is not going to help you in that endeavor right 
We want to learn how to do it, and we're all here to do that. So um, it's not a place to just try to escape things. Uh, but collaboration is how it's done in the real world. So I do, I do want to encourage collaboration, hence this Sys 106 Hangout, uh, all computer science Hangout, really. Um, but then again, I don't want to encourage cheating. <laughs> so it's a funny place for me to be in. Where I want to encourage collaboration and discourage cheating. But that's where we are. So back to the web page here. It's going to take a second because my computer's running so slow. All right. Uh oh, there we go. Thought I was going to be all locked up here, but maybe we're back in line. Okay. Okay, so we know what this Sys 106 Hangout is all about. I don't feel like this is working quite right. Is it? I should have rebooted before I did this video, I guess. Because things look a little funny to me right now. Oh, there's my mouse. Okay, now I feel like it's okay. All right, sorry about that. So six six one zero six hangout. That's a, a that's a full computer science virtual lab. That's what we're going to think about. That you're welcome to work with one another. Just don't copy code. When we have Zoom meetings, that is for for the uh, posted office hours or the by appointment hours. Like if if you and I, if, if one of us or a couple of us, whatever, set up a, a meeting, we're going to go to this room right here. So just click on that link or, or bookmark it or something like that. I don't know what, whatever you want to do. That's where we're always going to meet. Okay, so I had to make some official office hours. And so I did. Tuesday, Thursday. 12.30 to 1.30. Now I picked 12.30 to 1.30 because it's, it's over the common hour, right? So maybe many people have that common hour open. I don't know. Uh, but it, there's, there's no better time for me to, to randomly choose a time. Because um, you, you guys are all having classes at all different times and there's no specified spot for us to fit in. So it's perilous for me to try to choose particular times. I know that these times, this time, probably isn't going to work for everybody. And typically, I've done this a number of times now, and what I find is most of the time, this is how we handle it. <laughs> we, we, when you get stuck on something... We, we typically, you just shoot me an email and uh, we, we set up some time. I'm, I'm pretty darn flexible about the timing of when we have these meetings. I've done them on Saturdays even before. Um, typically, a meeting, if we're going to have one, is, is only going to be short. Now, that's not because I'm requiring it to be short, but because typically, if you're having a problem and it's not some kind of very fundamental misunderstanding of kind of everything that we're doing, um then they're, they're usually pretty quick five ten minutes if there's a little problem that you're snug uh snagged up on then typically just a little bump will get you going again that's typical if the problem is deeper than just i can't quite figure out what i'm doing wrong here you know usually if that's the, that's the idea of the small problem but your problem is more like i don't get any of this i'm really lost then um it might take longer. It might take an hour. <laughs> it might take two. I don't know. Uh, but it could take as long. When we set up an appointment, it can take as long as it takes, is what I'm saying. Whether it's five minutes or two hours. It doesn't matter. We set up a time. We work through whatever your problem is until that problem is solved. And so there's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Even though there's no face to I don't want to I don't like saying face-to-face -face either because we will be face-to-face -face just virtually. We just don't have an in-person meeting time, but this does seem to work out better. We have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time that's specific to particular problems that you're having rather than um, having a whole lot of broad, generalized conversation or you know, for a formal lecture for a long period of time. It's, it usually typically works out where we're, it's, it's, it's more, it's, well, if I, if I were going to use academic language on this, I would say that it's uh, set up as a problem-based learning course, right? Where we just break into a problem and start trying to figure it out, kind of like the, the way you try to figure out how to use a new phone. You, you don't get a lecture on that, right? 
you might look up some stuff here or there but really you just start playing with it tinkering with it until um you discover well i do i do know how to do a number of these things i figured out a lot of it but i i'm really hung up on this other particular uh, topic or problem um so then we jump on and, and 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 usually pretty quickly that's solved that's resolved and then you continue moving on and so little by little you work through the as you work through the problem um you, you learn how to program in python we use python in this class by the way python is our program programming language so these these appointments are important because they help get you when you're stuck on when you're hung up on something that doesn't mean that you're not going to get hung up on things um you will you're always just i mean it's just a part of life right we always get hung up on things but do we need to go so far as to make an appointment well that winds up being up to you uh if i were you i would you know try i i give it a number of shots i keep tinkering i try to figure out what's going wrong why is it not working the way i think it should work and then when i i just can't get it then um you shoot me an email and when we jump on sometimes not sometimes many many times i see the email come in and we immediately just jump online right and um and, and resolve whatever that issue might be so that can very well happen as well uh, but anyway when you get really hung up then we just jump on so by appointment is the really important part here this part is just an official you know that at any given tuesday or thursday between 12 30 and 1 30 you'll be able to log in to this zoom room and i'll be sitting here waiting for you and you won't have to send an email you won't have to do anything you just show up during that time All right and we'll resolve your issue there All right but again there won't be any formal lecture i've handled that in um, a bunch of videos that we'll see when i look at mod so i'm going to click on the modules because that's the way as i mentioned that i kind of envisioned the class so each week's going to have a module week one week two week three on and on and on and on and on so you, you can see them all in here uh, on my screen at least I, and i am in student view but i don't know why they're all there i don't have them all open i don't think whatever there's a module a set here for each week and there are 14 weeks in a semester and there's one for spring break too there's nothing in it but there's one there um so week one and these we have dates here right february 6th february 7th and then this one oddly enough interestingly enough february 12th right and that one that last one has 50 points next to it well this one is the assignment that you're going to turn in these first two are could be readings could be videos um could be any they're taking the place of the lecture these the, the everything up to but not including the last one so in every week it's the same it's the same way they, they they're going to be longer than that too so for instance you have there there's only two there again there's three you know that there's going to be a, another one on this one so this isn't built out all the way yet but it will be as we move forward in the semester i will always keep that pattern where the, the learning materials are first the first whatever however many whereas the last one the last row here in this set is always the submittable the thing that you're trying to submit for a grade all right so uh and and i want them to be in order and we need them to be in order there's a reason why they're in the order that they're in and so in order to get coerce canvas to keep them in order i have to put a date on them otherwise it looks for other ways to order them like it puts them in some sort of alphabetical order or something i don't know exactly what it's doing but it's not the order i want them in so in order to keep them in my order because they are sequential right i had to put this to do date on so notice how they're in in sequence <clears throat> you can do these all on february 8th if you want it has no it does not matter what that date is if i could number them one two three in order to keep them in order i would just do that but this puts so this is a way for me to keep them in this order uh, this is always going to be a monday that first one so i know february 6th is a monday february 7th is a tuesday it doesn't even matter if they get mixed up just the order matters that that one's before this one um 
and here's where you gotta in, uh, install the software that we're gonna use. So we'll talk about that for a moment, too, briefly. Uh, so this thing, these are to-dos, that's T-O dash D-O. That's a to-do date. Doesn't mean you have to do it. You're not gonna get a grade for these. It just means we're keeping them in order. We should start the week off strong and do one and then do one and then do one. And then this is a, a DUE due date, February 12th. So we wanna get our project, whatever we were working on this week, get it submitted by February 12th, which will always be a Sunday uh, at midnight. So you have a full week to get that assignment in. Uh, and I would say you don't want to wait till Sunday to start these. Because that is really problematic. It would be best if you started them on a Monday. And then you could get it submitted uh, early would be better, right? Because you're not leaving yourself a back door if you do that. If you start on Sunday, you have no way to set up an appointment with me if you get stuck along the way. Because I, I don't come on at Sunday night at 11.30 p.m., right? That's That's something that won't happen. Um, so that we just move on through week one, then we'll move to week two, week three as we go down. All right, so that I think is keeps us organized in this kind of way. Oh, the due date, so it's due on the 12th, and then there is a late penalty for every day beyond the 12th, and that late penalty is uh, 10% per day these I, i'm calling them labs because it's kind of like a lab that we're doing here when you work it out um you'll use a piece of software which we'll talk about in a moment and and, and write some code and then send that in so it's kind of a little bit lab like at least for computer science in computer science world i mean there's no frogs here or anything so we're not it's not a biology lab this is definitely a computer science lab so you would complete that and, and submit it if you get it on the 12th you get full credit if it's a day late, you lose 10%. They're always worth 50 points, each of these labs. So 10% will be five points. So every day that you're late, you lose five points. <coughs> All right, so that just runs on and on until you're 10 days late. If we calculate that math, when you're 10 days late, you will have lost 50 points. That's the full value of the, of the exercise. So you don't want, you really don't want to do that. If you're a day late, Excuse me. Is it really going to make a difference? No, not really. These are worth 50 points a piece, and there are, well, there's 14 weeks. One, one week is a midterm, one week is a final. So we have 12 weeks. We have 12 of these, 50 times 50. And um, one of them, one day late, is only five points out of the 50 which and the 50 turns out is 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 50 of your grade well we'll see the whole the whole sum is so it's it's really a day late here a day late there is not the end of the world you know I've, I've structured the course in such a way that there's no one single grade that will make or break you now midterms and finals which we'll we'll do projects for those they could be painful if you miss them. They could really hurt, right? Because they're worth they're worth a significant amount of, of points. Um, but individual labs by themselves, not so much. If you develop a pattern where every week you're you're a couple few days late, we'll start to that'll start to build steam. Kind of think of it like your GPA. It's not gonna crush you to have one course that you did do great on but when it becomes two or three or four courses or five and none of them are horrible but you missed it a little bit on each of those they start to build right it's like a snowball starts to build you, you don't want that to keep going like that but one class is not going to destroy your whole entire college career right but two now three or four, five classes, things start to, to hurt. It really starts to, to it's, it's just the nature of averages. And so this is going to be an average anyway when it's all done. And so when you develop a pattern, that becomes a problem. 
I'm just trying to put your mind at ease that like a, 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 if you're one one Sunday night at 11:59 and you're um <laughs> you're freaking out because you're going to be a day late as long as you haven't done it over and over and over again it it won't be the end of the world we'll just fix it in the morning and and so what you'll lose 5 points it's insignificant at the end that little 5 points all right but don't don't let it become a habit don't miss the midterm. Don't miss the final. Those two are biggies. And, and I'll, uh, here, we'll look at the grades so you can see how that works. That's kind of like doing the syllabus a little bit when we look at the grades, right? That's the most important part of the syllabus. So there is a syllabus, and you can click this and, and uh, go to the syllabus, and you'll see what I'm saying about the grades written right on the syllabus. Uh, but I'm actually just doing it right now, kind of. So... I'm looking at the grade grade book. I'm sure you guys have used Canvas enough that you all know how that works. Scores are always here. These are always 50 percent, uh, 50 points. I mean, um, these are the due dates. These are always Sunday nights at midnight, right? You'll notice though, there's one. Hey, how'd that get changed to 11 p.m.? That's weird. It's close to midnight, but they should all be midnight, except for the midterm. When we get to the midterm, I don't know if it's in there or not. No, the date's not even in there yet. Um, the midterm I won't be able to do Sunday night at midnight and that's because the university wants midterm grades in on Friday evening so they don't give me until Monday <laughs> and then they get grumpy when those grades are not in on Friday. So for the midterm, the midterm project will have to be due at a, at a time that's reasonable for me to be able to get them graded and entered on Canvas, and then your grade moved from Canvas onto UDSIS. So I think they're set at, uh, they're going to be set for uh, noon. It'll, it'll show on here when it comes around for noon on Friday rather than midnight Sunday. And that's the one exception to all of these. Now the final will be fine as well. Probably have the same midnight on Sunday due date so I can try to hold the pattern. I would like to hold the pattern. It's the, you know, the only thing that's causing us a problem here is the registrar. <laughs> the registrar gets really grumpy if the midterm grades are not in uh, on Friday. <laughs> so. Um, we'll have to try and comply the best we can with that, and I'm sure we will do it. So just keep an eye out for that. Just be aware that it'll happen when midterms come around. It won't follow the same pattern on that one submission. But all the rest are all there, and you can see the, how the grades are, are um, distributed here all over on this side. What I'm calling the labs, that's what we were just looking at, the weekly things that we do, are a total of 50% of your grade. And then the midterm and the final are each worth 25%. So if you miss one, that hurts, right? That's 25% going. So the best you can get is still a passing grade, 75, even if you missed the midterm altogether. That has got a zero. That's unlikely. So if the midterm at 25% missing it got a zero can't fail you on its own, then certainly missing one day of one of these labs, being one day late of one of these labs, Obviously, that can't get you a failing grade by any stretch of the imagination, right? You would have to do a number of these late or not turned in at all, plus one of these not turned in, or some combination of that, right? But you can see clearly from the way this is laid out that there's no way any one of these, I mean, even this one, that you would say, well, if you miss that one, it would it would fail you. But that's not one. That's 12. <laughs> you'd have to miss all 12 labs in order to, and you'd still get a 50 in the class. So there's no single grade that can destroy you. And even a late charge along the way is even less detrimental. Okay, I just want to put your mind at ease. I don't want, I don't want you getting all stressed out while you're trying to get these things turned in okay so that's that on that um 
Now let me just let's look at the syllabus and see if there happens to be anything there that I that I haven't mentioned already. That's slipping my mind right now while I'm doing this. I mean, we want to click that. But I did this whole thing in student view. That's fine. That's good. It's going to be close to what you're looking at. If not exactly the same. Uh, my email, right? That that was on the, 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 the home page of Canvas as well. So that's important. W-B-O-Y-E-R. Okay, it's not just Boyer. It's W-B-O-Y-E-R at udell.edu. You know our Zoom meeting time is on the main page. <coughs> yeah, we'll post it on Canvas. Catalog description. These are the things we're trying to do in the course. Assessment. There's 25. 25, 25, 50. That's right. That's what we saw on Canvas as well. So these red things are important. Oh, yes. This is... I'm glad we looked. I really want you guys to keep this in mind that there is no extra credit in, the, in this course. Uh, it happens. This is here, and I'm stressing it so much because it happens every semester that someone misses a bunch of work, these labs. And then at the end of the semester, we're all trying to wrap it up to go home. And here we are coming into summer, right? We want to all want to go on summer break. Someone is going to ask me if they can have an extra credit assignment for the seven labs they missed. So now what the expectation is that I'm going to sit here in my office and come up with seven new assignments for, to take the place of something that everybody else did already and turned in on time. It's just not going to happen, right? That, that's craziness. I'm not doing, we're not doing that. So there's no extra credit, right? You, you get it in or not. I mean, there is late charge. But it's not zero by not turning it in until you didn't turn it in for, as we mentioned, 10 days. Um, and here it is again, make up and extra credit. There's no such thing as that. Here. Yeah, the midterm and the, the final, that's this line. The midterm and the final, you know, just as if we were in class, they have to be submitted on time, right? That, that's, I, I typically give, if they're, they're going to be a project, so you'll have midterm week, right? So you have a week to do the project. When it's due, let's stick with the midterm for a moment in this conversation. When it's due at noon on Friday, then that's it. It's, it's, there's not like, okay, we'll wait a day and I'll just lose uh, 10%. That, they, they work differently like that. They don't have a, 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 a late fee. They're, they're all or nothing, just like they would be if we were meeting in person and sitting down, taking a regular exam by hand. There's the penalization right there, 10% per day. I just mentioned to you that 10% is of 50 is five points. So you lose five points per day, which means, implies that you have 10 days to get it turned in until it goes to zero. Uh, 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 right, and they have to all—they all have to come in through uh, Canvas. Right. You can't like package them up late into an email and send me an email with eight labs attached, all the previous labs with something written in the email like, "I had all these but forgot to submit them." <laughs> they were sitting on my computer. Every week, I, I completed an assignment and mysteriously forgot over and over and over, week after week, to actually submit it through Canvas. <laughs> it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. And so then here's the grade distribution as well. Uh-oh, did I just mess this up? That's the grade distribution. All right. And I already mentioned academic dishonesty as well. You know my position on that. I do not consider working together, uh, learning together, cheating. That's important for you to understand. Although I, that said, I do consider swapping code cheating. 
if you're just copying this code from somebody and copy paste it onto another Thani and um, and submit it as your own work, then that is problematic. All right, let's jump off here. We're talking about this thing Thani, or I keep mentioning it. Um, so we're we'll be using an, an IDE integrated development environment um, to write our code. It can it can it gives us a place something to write into like word right so if you want to write a document you need some sort of a text editor word would be your text editor you can write into word and then you can save that document and it winds up being my resume dot docx or something like that boy look how slow my computer is running today it's a reboot that's windows for you right anyway so what we need is a piece of software that kind of works like that and so the software we're going to use is uh thani and so let me give you a little peek at it we have a already have a module that goes through this so i'm not going to actually go through this today but just for a little bit of a heads up here so i have an upper screen and a lower screen i can type into these screens and so here's an example of some python code right there yeah, i was clicking on the wrong screen Right here is an example of some Python code, and um, I can execute commands right here against this code. So it gives me a way to write the code. You can write the code down here too, but you, you're going to be writing it up here, and then we'll do our executions down here. And then you can file, save, save as, just like you do with Word, save as, wherever that is, somewhere on there. Oh, save as. Save as or save if you've already named it. Of course, we're going to want to name it something that we'll know what it is, like maybe week one, right? And so Word, when you when you save a Word document, it gets saved as a something dot docx I just mentioned, right? Like re, if I'm doing my resume, resume dot docx. It's that dot docx, the file extension that that tells a, a Windows machine, and I think a Mac's now a Mac as, as well. Uh, what software to use to open that file and so what we want is an extension that's unique to Thani so that when you try to double click on the fold on that particular object <laughs> that file in your in your computer it doesn't try to open with word but rather it opens with Thani so that file extension is going to be .py python and this is python code by the way a little bit of Python code. If you know a little bit about coding, it, it looks kind of C, C++ like, maybe a little Perl like, which are all kind of C derivatives. All of these languages, they're all kind of similar, a little bit Java like, JavaScript. You see words, keywords that, that you recognize for, mm, I don't see a while there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna learn a lot about, about that, a lot about that as we move through the semester. So anyway, when you File save as, make sure you know where that file is going. Keep yourself a folder or something for Sys 106. And um, th that file is what you're gonna submit. Just like if you're writing an essay, you need to know what the name of the file is that you just saved, right? And you need to know where it is, where you won't be able to submit it. Fidelity won't be able, Fidelity won't be able to get her, uh, her file from you because you're like, well, I don't, I don't know where I saved it. It's on your computer somewhere. You wrote it on your computer. So remember you saved it. You know that it's a .py. The .py is what causes Windows to, to know that it should open with, with Thani. This so free software that you're going to download. And I think we saw in... When I had here, we'll go back here again. We're back on the browser. Oh, because we're in syllabus, that's why. So we want to be there. And then if we're in the modules, that's how I do it. You might use the to-do. Remember that was over there. Here it comes, week one, slowly but surely. Thani installation. So this is the installation of that software is something that we're going to do uh, in the first week.
So, I mean, you could be doing it now, right? It's just installing some software. If you're going to install some software, you're going to play around with it a little bit, to kind of acclimate yourself with it a bit, and, and then we'll start moving forward. If you have any issues getting Thani installed, then um, we need to set up a, medium, a meeting real quick so that we can get that straightened out. You can't do anything without it, right? It's like thinking that we're going to write essays in some course, but we can't get our word processor or whatever it is, maybe it's Word, um, working. Then that's going to be a problem. Right? <laughs> so that's why this is has its own unique uh, its own unique week. This first week is we cannot have any issues with this. We need to be able to get it up, get it installed, get something typed into it, and get it submitted. And now we know the whole cycle, and then we can move on as we as we go. Uh, using Python and in, in, in Thani. Now there are other, just a little FYI, there are other uh, IDEs that, that can work with uh, Python. It's just, this happens to be a very common one, one that's used a lot. There are other word pro uh, editors uh, than Word, right? There's Google what, Sheets and there's one on a Mac. So, yeah, I mean, this kind of software, there are always more than one, there's always more than one version of this, type, any kind of software. So there are other IDEs that will also allow you to write Python and, and execute it. That's kind of important. You want to be able to execute it as well. So you might come across some different ones, or you might see other ones referenced in text. Maybe you'll reference some other ones in the, in the online text that we're using. I'm using a, an online text. I would use it in, if we weren't online because it's free and it covers all the topics that are typically covered in all computer science courses. So it's a very st standard layout of, of everything we need to cover. And you don't have to pay for it, which is awesome, right? So I think that covers most everything. If you do have any questions, you can give me a call. Uh, don't give me a call. You can <laughs> shoot me an email, and uh, I'll get back with you. We'll set up a meeting if you need. Shoot me an email with your question, or and your question could be, can we set up a meeting? Uh, that would be perfectly fine with me. All right, um, I think that's enough to get us kind of up and running. Go ahead and get Thani installed, and we'll see where we are from there. All right, guys. That's it for this one. <laughs> See you on the next video. Bye.